We're going to look at how we can use these global variables to allow us to make changes in draw that allows us to support animation. We'll do this through the example of the rising and setting sun. The sun looks bigger when it's on the horizon, although it's not, and it tends to be more red in the evening. So we know that we want our animated sun to head from the bottom to the top of the screen, getting smaller as it does so, while at the same time heading from left to right. This means that we won't be starting at the xy point zero, 00, so we have to make sure that our setup starts things in the right place. Let's keep it simple. Although the path of the sun in the sky isn't a simple straight line, we're going to make it get to a certain point near the top of the animation as we move from left to right and then come down again. If we combine that with changing size and color, it's going to look reasonably good. So what do we need to keep track of? We need to keep track of the location of the center of the circle that we're drawing and how large it needs to be. That way, we can draw our sun circle in different places and different sizes, and it will capture most of what we want. The start of our code looks like this. Here we define three global variables, although we don't give them any values yet. Then we enter the setup method and set the size of the canvas, the background color, a bluish shade, the initial fill color of the sun, yellow, a white line to frame the sun, the starting x position, zero, against the left-hand side, the starting y position, height, right down the bottom, and we say that we want our circles to start being drawn as 70 pixels wide and high. If we just type this in, nothing happens because we haven't given a draw instruction yet. Let's not worry about changing the size or the color yet. In that case, we can get something happening with this code. And you can see how what we set up is now being used to start things in the right position, and then we modify them. We're not using all of the screen, so let's increase the movement in height by changing those Y adjustments from 1 to 2. That's better. Note carefully that to get the effect we want, we check to see where we are in our movement across the screen. The sun rises, drops Y value until we get to the middle of the screen, and then it sets again. What happens if we just add the circle size into that? Oh, it gets far too small. How about we only change it every fifth time X changes? With some trial and error to see what looks good, each time the sun changes size, it does so by two pixels and it will change every time that X can be divided by five, leaving nothing over. Remember that from checking for even numbers? Now we have two choices for the colors. But because we are changing three values to get different colors, we're using our knowledge of how color works in RGB to, well, cheat a little. Yellow is red and green at full strength. So stroke 255.2550 will give us yellow. And we know adding blue is going to take us closer to white. But then we want to head towards red. Rather than use extra variables, we're going to take advantage of the fact that the change in X is nice and predictable. Now our final code looks like this. As the sun moves from left to right, it gets higher until we reach the midpoint, and then it starts getting lower again. At the same time, it gets smaller the higher it goes and gets bigger the closer it is to the horizon. All of that is managed using those global variables at the start. Changing the values in the setup code and changing the values in the draw code to show that we don't need to use global variables for everything, we're also changing the color of the sun by using our changing value of x to cause an appropriate color change. Some of you might be wondering what happens if you assign the values of those global variables outside of the setup function. We've removed the variable setting from setup and the first three lines of the program now look like this. Running this gives us a strange result. The sun starts off at the wrong position disappears off the screen, then comes back, and from that point on, is in the right position? Can you guess what happened? When processing starts, the default canvas size is 100 by 100, until we change that value in the setup function with the size function. That's what height and width will both be. Global variables are not guaranteed to know what has happened in setup, so in this case, y gets set to the wrong value of 100 for the first pass and is then reset correctly for all future executions. Declare your global variables at the top of your program, but make sure that you set their initial values in setup after you've done everything to make processing look how you want. That's it for this session. Let's see what you've learned.